Hello and welcome or welcome back everyone. How are you doing? First of all, I would like to thank you for subscribing to the channel. We now are 6,000 subscribers. So thank you so much. Today I'm finally finishing the Waddington's Jigsaw Puzzle containing 1500 pieces and entitled Chester by Louise Rayner. And Chester, by the way, is a place in England, a beautiful place with historical buildings and a beautiful, interesting background, initially colonized by Romans. So there are lots of Roman uh, buildings and ruins in Chester. So I highly recommend you check it out. And I highly recommend you also search for Louise Rayner. She is a 19th century female artist that specialized in watercolor urban environments. But now back to the puzzle. Eh? Now, as you know, I'm really organized when it comes to uh, puzzle trays and where I place the pieces before I start the puzzle. So there's also something really interesting, an update or upgrade to my puzzle trace that may interest you as well. So we're going to check that in just a second. And please remember to check the end of this video because there's going to be some uh, final thoughts on this puzzle as well. But before we do anything else, let's recap part number one. Enjoy. Besides putting together the framing of this puzzle, I was also confronted with hundreds of white pieces that made up the sky. But I also gave you some really interesting and very personal tips as well on how to approach areas like that. You see, because I like keeping the pieces in the tray in the same position, I thought I could possibly try this felt material which is a textile super cheap textile that you can get by meters this one was around five dollars a meter here in new zealand and i got this beautiful deep gray color and i cut in the exact um, same size as the bottom of my trays and um, i gave it a go it actually did a really good job in holding the pieces in place as you can see here but we are also going to see in just a second the negative side of this very feature of felt you see it may be wonderful in keeping the pieces in place and you can move it around you can shake the uh, the tray and the pieces will still be there however one of the negative sides of this is that if you hold try to hold the pieces in the wrong place the whole thing will come off because of the the bond that has been created between the pieces and of the, the felt and because this fabric doesn't last very long the last thing i want is to make it permanent using glue another thing that i noticed as well is when using felt you can see all sorts of dust particles and particularly animal hair if you also have animals <laughs> My sorting for this particular puzzle was really kind of rough because most of the pieces were of around the same color, a light beige or light brown. I have also tried to maintain the pieces that had a similar shape all together in the same tray, but most of the time it didn't really work. We have spoken about this during my Halloween 2023 jigsaw puzzle of how much I enjoy the representation of uh, bricks and tiles in puzzles. And this one is no different. So all I had to do is to follow those brick lines, which was super fun to complete. And imagine how challenging this part was. And again, I always talk about this in my videos. When you come across parts of puzzles that are so, that appear initially to be extremely complicated, just study all the pieces, sit back, look from another angle, have a break, and then everything will fall into place, literally. And I'm not entirely sure if I mentioned this before, but with this particular puzzle, it seems like one piece is horizontal, the other piece is vertical, and then vice versa on the other line. Sometimes, you get those weird puzzles where all the pieces look exactly the same and I try to avoid those as much as possible. So if you are new to puzzles by any chance and you're trying to get information on how you can have a better experience with puzzles, just remember if you buy the really cheap puzzles on Timu or sometimes even on Amazon or eBay, if they have all the pieces have exactly the same shape, you may end up having 
a very boring experience with your puzzles. You see, I must have spent about an hour and a half on this part of the puzzle, uh, you know, working on the bricks and also uh, trying to figure out where those beige color pieces uh, would go. Of course, there were parts that were even more tricky than any other parts. The parts, you know, that I find the, the hardest for me, in my opinion, are the ones that contain lots of elements in one piece or lots of different colors in one piece. That for me makes it a lot more difficult. But then you have parts like this parts here of the brick that you can clearly see where the pieces could possibly be placed at, if you know what I mean. And then you come across lots of angles, lots of lines, lots of different shades of, um, of the same color. And that for me makes a lot more sense than having all the sorts of colors in one, in one single piece. And now again, I'm starting to get myself prepared for what's coming, you know, very soon, which is all that bottom half of the puzzle. Now, I suppose the highlights of this puzzle, for me at least, was working on that tower, which is sort of a ghostly image, isn't it? This is the um, Chester Town Hall, which is behind St. Peter's Church, which is this brown one on the front. And again, I, I'm still mesmerized at how long it took me to complete this white part of the puzzle or the sky in this puzzle. And I had so much fun with it, even though it took me a long time. And again, if you have a, a, a good look here, you can see that one piece is horizontal and then the other piece is vertical and then vice versa on the second line. So it wasn't so hard. And talking about lines, have a look at this. This seems initially extremely difficult, but once you pay attention to the tales and the information given on each piece, it's not actually that hard. It just takes a very long time for us to kind of uh, figure out where the pieces would go. And once you do that, everything falls into place. For some weird reason, one of the parts that I was far more uh, concerned about completing was the pavement part, which is the bottom half of this puzzle. I think it took me about a couple of days. I don't know exactly how many hours I took to do that. But all I needed to do was to pay attention to this very, very small details that were presented to me on each one of the pieces. So I had to spend a lot of time using a magnifying glass and then studying what each piece was telling me and then trying to figure out the shapes. A lot of those shapes, a lot of those pieces on the bottom half of this puzzle, um, even though they were following that same pattern that we were talking about before, like one horizontal, one vertical, it was still kind of tricky for me to figure out where exactly the pieces would go. But eventually I got there and everything, everything became really clear to me. And, you know, no surprises there. I really enjoyed every single minute that I spent with this part of the puzzle. It's all about patience and, I guess, endurance. I don't know if you can relate to me when I say this, but every time when I'm working on a puzzle that has minimal information, when you come across pieces like this, where they have very clear details or lines or whatever that is, it's just such an exciting and breakthrough moment 
on our journey, isn't it? So if you agree with me, make sure you hit the like button there for me, just to let me know you are in the same boat as me. You get really excited when you find that very special piece amongst hundreds of others that kind of look all the same. And here's another highlight of this puzzle. When I finally arrived to the very center of it, where a lot of the hustle and bustle was taking place, a lot of people, a lot of horses, carriages, people on the windows, children. It was really fun to put together this part. But we are heading towards the end of this puzzle now, my friends, and I really hope you enjoyed it. I didn't have much in terms of tips for you today. Uh, all I can say is if you want to start solving puzzles that are bigger than a thousand pieces, go for it. You won't feel much of a difference. Okay. And here it is the last piece and it is missing. Yay. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered uh, creating a piece for this one. I just decided to leave it as it is as part of its own uh, journey. This is a 1987 puzzle and I can only imagine how many people have solved this puzzle before or if you had just one um, loving and caring home before. But anyway, let's check out, let's just do an overview of this puzzle and then I'm going to talk to you about my final thoughts on it. Interestingly enough, I discovered one piece that had a very, like a different blue color, and it seems like this marks the very center of the puzzle. And yes, in case you have watched my previous video on uh, how to create uh, puzzle bags using fabrics, at this time of this, the recording of this video, I had not made any bags for this particular puzzle, but by now it has, uh, I already have a beautiful bag for it and I might show you in the communities tab here on the channel. All right, guys, this is it. That's the end of the Chester Jigsaw Puzzle by Louise Rayner. A, um, a super, like a vintage Jigsaw Puzzle from 1987 produced by Waddington's, which, as you may know, no longer exists and ceased to exist in the 1990s, I believe. One other big question, was it worth solving this massive Jigsaw Puzzle? How hard was it? How much fun did I have with it? So let's talk about it. Well, by now, I really hope you have actually watched part number one, which was all about the framing and the, you know, the white parts of this puzzle, which was, uh, it was really difficult and challenging, but by no means it was impossible. 
Um, for some of you out there who may be starting with puzzles, uh, you may come across many of those, uh, you know, um, examples where you find that half the puzzle is just one color with very little information. And many of you might be thinking like, yeah, but this is just too much. I hate sky because like I've, I've heard many people saying this, um, that they absolutely hate puzzles that have a lot of sky. I'm quite the opposite. I really enjoy that challenge when I see that the puzzle has a lot of like blank spaces or blue spaces in that case. I, I really think it's going to be super fun unless, of course, if the, the puzzle pieces are all the same, like some of the puzzles that we may buy uh, online, all of the pieces have exactly the same shape. That would be extremely boring for anyone to uh, put together, given that the color is just the same, all the same, and then the shape is going to be all the same. Um, in that sense, I have to agree with you. It, it would probably be extremely boring. I noticed almost instantly that the the sky was had a horizontal piece and then it had a vertical piece, horizontal, vertical, and then underneath it had vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. And then you had those weird shapes uh, in between them. And that was, uh, I've got to say, I had a lot of fun doing it, but it took me a very, very long time to complete that part of the puzzle. I started in early November and I finished the puzzle well after Christmas, just for you to have an idea, that part of the puzzle. Uh, because uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm not a full-time puzzler yet. Um, it will all depend on the number of likes you put there and also uh, the number of views we get on the channel. So please go hard on the likes there. But I'm not a, a full-time puzzler yet, like some of my fellow puzzlers on YouTube. So I only have a couple of hours a week to complete the uh, the puzzles that I start. Um, hence, all of this, um, the um, all of the time that I'm, you know, the time frame that I'm giving you here. Now, another thing that I thought would be interesting to mention is uh, how subtle the color scheme of this watercolor um, painting was. And I didn't realize that until I started sorting because I had pretty much all of the pieces were like a very light beige or light brown with a very occasional tones of green or tones of like a dark chocolatey brown. But most of it was a mixture of beige and light browns, which made it really difficult. You may have seen, um, you know, in some of the footage that I have uh, magnifying glass because I actually ended up needing to use some magnifying glasses and it was um, an, inter an interesting experience, I have to say. But now let's give it a final verdict. In terms of fun, I would give it a 9 out of 10 easy. I really enjoyed every minute I spent with it. So I would highly recommend if you can get a copy of it, if you can get one, um, go on eBay or Amazon and try to get one. One of you guys have mentioned that you bought one and you got the wrong puzzle so i'm really sorry to hear that but you can still find this very puzzle online or on collectors um, collectors websites or uh, shops now in terms of difficulty i can easily say this was also an eight and a half or nine out of ten in terms of difficulty because it was extremely challenging there were parts where I would spend hours and hours trying to figure out and I had that situation where I had to try the pieces hundreds of times and then turn my puzzle trays around and then start again and look for that specific corner or that specific shape because I was running out of options in terms of color. And then I would turn it again and then go over and over just looking for one specific piece so that was um, quite challenging so i would give it probably a solid nine out of ten for difficulty in terms of price this was a one dollar jigsaw puzzle that i found at the very back of a second hand shop it wasn't even on the front with the other fancy puzzles it was at the very back in a pile that was unwanted and this puzzle was literally 50 cents that's you know, unbelievable. And it is 
practically the most beautiful puzzle, in my opinion, that I have in my collection. So I cannot complain. I would say this is uh, an amazing price for a puzzle like this. Now, quality. Some of you guys, I noticed that many of you said, oh, this is a blurry puzzle, but it wasn't blurry at all. This was a watercolor puzzle. And I, from my opinion, I would say there are many other puzzles out there that are extremely blurry. This was not blurry. It was just that the color scheme was very tricky to work with, but by no means it was a blurry puzzle. And the quality overall of this 1987, 19 and the quality overall of this 1987 puzzle is exceptional it has not lost the colors it was nice and vibrant and also the pieces i came across a couple like literally like four or five out of 1500 that i needed to glue back in know that the the picture had to be glued to the um to the cardboard so um that was no big issue and by no means this was a low quality puzzle in fact i thought it was super high quality for you know for its age and also having been around for so long and probably has been completed by hundreds of people so in terms of quality i would give it a solid seven and a half out of ten but now you noticed as well that there is one piece missing right in the middle of the puzzle and I thought about creating a replacement, but to be honest, I don't think there is the need to uh, create a, a replacement piece for this specific puzzle. I could have done that, but I decided not to uh, because it's part of its history, I think, and I would just leave it as it is. And again, I do not enjoy or like framing my puzzles. I think I have no space for them in my house so i don't see the point so normally you will see that on my videos when i finish the puzzle as soon as i finish them i will just destroy the whole thing put it back in the box and hopefully i will solve it again at some stage in the future just as a nostalgic moment i may come back to the same puzzle in a year's time for example when we get to a hundred thousand subscribers and i may redo the puzzles that you and I enjoyed here on the channel initially. But this is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is the end of this puzzle. And if you enjoy puzzles like this, make sure you like this video, okay? And share online. Tell your friends about the channel. And, um, you know, do the things you know we need to do. And there's a little mosquito flying here. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video and if you want to watch other puzzle solving videos like this there's a playlist right here now so just click on it and there's quite a few uh, really beautiful jigsaw puzzles there for you to um, to enjoy and if you want to see my collection of puzzles where i review them i talk about the pieces the qualities and things like that check this playlist right here okay and i'll see you next time